yeah, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about like what is the best way to get it across on a mainstream platform like YouTube that's going to be censorious, maybe of this sort of stuff, depending if you don't go about it the right way. Uh, you know, th- there's a real there's a real technique to it to be like maximally effective in getting your messaging across while also remaining as safe as you can be. Yes, it's good to see people popping up on YouTube again because, um, like, it's kind of frustrating for me because, in like, 2016, 17, our stuff was all over the major platforms. That's how a lot of people were getting red pill. Like, a big part of how I got red pilled was like uh, stuff through YouTube sort of going down like a YouTube rabbit hole. But like, I feel like after a certain point of censorship, everyone just kind of gave up on the big platforms. Like it's understandable, but at the same time, there are ways to navigate it. Like even if you're if you're totally banned, like people can make clipping channels. You know, you see like, if you search Nick Fuentes, like there's always like Kruipers making new clipping channels, posting and stuff. And that's really necessary. But I feel like after the censorship, a lot of people were like, uh, you know, streaming really became a thing, uh, much more than it was a few years ago. The video essay used to be a much bigger thing. And the video essay, I think, is still the best way to reach quote unquote normies, right? Because they, they they're not going to read like a, a, right. a sub stack about fascism or, um, you know, your Telegram effort posts or whatever. Like very early sort of red pills for me was like, you know, like the short, like Paul Joseph Watson, like him screaming mm-hmm. about modern art with the the map behind him uh like you need you need that punchy stuff especially for people that like haven't thought a lot about politics you know the way the dynamic changed a lot of people became streamers and it's like okay i have like my 400 viewers that i'm going to get every stream and they're going to give me you know x amount of money every week and you know i'm going to get by with that and i can make my content and it's like you know the, the replays disappear and they're not like even archiving it and you know they, they go to like paywall and they start paywall and everything and it's like well we have our sort of dedicated fans and um you know let's just like build up with these like radical few but yeah the you know the effort being put into like how do we how do we spread our ideas as much as possible definitely uh waned which is yeah it's definitely a problem and yeah i definitely don't think we should we should sacrifice the platforms and like you said it's not easy but there, there is kind of a way to to navigate around these things even if it's you know if it's twitter like making alts and kind of um supporting each other building up people's alt accounts when they come back and with youtube i mean youtube is obviously bad and if you're in the us it's very bad because the thing about the us is the adl just puts you on a list and you're banned right it's, you don't even have to have to violate content and that's true outside of the us as well to an extent but especially the the us um you know the adl says jump and, and youtube asks how high but still there is it is possible you can get away with a lot right i mean if, if someone looked through my channel uh, you know, like my last video was about like downsides of diversity and I've got a lot of videos arguing for nationalism. You know, I've got a, a video pretty in depth and like the, the behind the Iraq war. Uh, like if, if you're smart about it, you can kind of get away with a lot. But even if you can't, I mean, you have to make the effort. Like, you know, what's, what's the point if we're not trying to bring new people in, right? Yeah, there's there's too much of a focus, like you said, on like there's kind of two types of messaging you can do. It's one's the internal and one's the external. And we really need we've got the internal down pat, you know, but that's it's just preaching to the choir. So, yeah, you need, you need these ways to just like just approach these subjects that are that are kind of difficult. You know, there's a lot of strategies to do that. But I, I, honestly, my main <laughs> my main thing I can do is just like try to keep all the videos fact based. I, I, I really don't know if you can do much besides that. And, and maybe there's going to come a day where they just decide like, hey, we're going to ban you. If you, you know, we, you violated some arbitrary decree or whatever. But yeah, I mean, that's not that's not a reason to, you know, to not get it out there. There's no better platform than YouTube. We need to be on there in order to um, bring in new followers, as it were, like to. Yeah, to I mean, the, the good thing, good thing about video essays is like they're, you know, it's not like a stream that disappears after a few days or it's just on on current news events and it's not relevant after a week. Like w- with the video essays, you can always just have like a resource to link people to, like even if it's um, like I saw people arguing about that that topic, about like the Iraq war and the war for oil thing uh, in a chat the other day. And like people were just linking my Iraq war video. So that's like um, it's a useful resource to have like all our arguments and like accessible uh, video format that someone with a pretty low attention span can watch a six or eight minute video and Mm-hmm. Like you said, it has to be, you have to stick to the facts as much as possible, right? If you've got all the sources there and you actually are interacting with someone, that's very critical, right? If you've got all these these sources that can follow and check for themselves, um, that's obviously important because it's like no one really, like you can't really change someone's mind. Like no, it, it's very rare that you just like beat someone in an argument and then they adopt your worldview. Like beating someone in an argument does help change their views, but it's still them that changes their mind, right? They... 
uh, they're like, there's even they've shown this in studies that like, if if you beat someone in an argument, they'll actually hold on to their their view more because they feel under attack and they kind of take it personally, and then they attach like their personal self worth to holding that belief. But you can kind of point people in the direction, right? You can kind of uh, you can kind of prod them and suggest them. And I think the, like the ideal is to kind of make them feel like they're they're concluding this themselves and they're putting the pieces yeah. together. Yeah. And so yeah, your you know your Rogan video is like uh, is like perfect for that because it's like hey you know here's these facts. Uh, I don't have a strong like ideological take on this, but uh, you know you can investigate yeah. this for yourself. And this is just this is just funny. Uh, what was one point I wanted to make here? I got I got a handful of points that I was I was kind of considering uh, when uh, when doing messaging or whatever. One is uh, and I've gotten sort of people who have like replied to my videos who I think didn't understand what I was doing. Was or they, or they, that was coming from this sort of perspective. One is that like, as much as it sounds kind of dishonest is you, you shouldn't really uh, spend too much time or really acknowledge at all the other side <laughs> of the debate you're in when you're doing something in particular, like, you know, and I was making the, uh, the Greeks are not gay video. There are easily dozens of different videos on YouTube that mostly just rehash the same facts, but they, you know, they all just reinforce this idea of like ancient Greeks were totally gay. When I was making my video, although I still did, recognize some of those arguments i even say that like yeah uh, sexual pederasty g- existed to a certain degree um, it's just that it was looked down upon it was never sanctioned people thought it was shameful um, so i still recognize it however pretty much the focus of the video was just like let's not talk about that at all let's just focus on my points although people would like you know describing it like this people would accuse me of being dishonest uh, the point is that like you got to consider the impact that it's having on people you put out your one video. So you got, you got a dozen videos to say ancient Greeks were gay. You put out your one video and it's like, it's kind of measured speech about like, yeah, you know, I don't think they were gay. They, they were gay like this, to be fair, kind of. So you end up creating the scenario where it's like everyone here agrees on this one thing. And then the guy who supposedly disagrees still pretty much agrees. Obviously, that's going to create a scenario in people's minds where they go, OK, yeah, I guess they were gay. So, you know, that that's one main point. It's just like when you have your point, just argue your your point, make it as, as best as possible. It, it's like you're defending someone in court. You don't have to be <laughs> fair and measured. That's for the other side to do. And that's not only is that best to get your point across, it's probably a better environment for the argument to exist in anyhow, because like you don't want somebody who doesn't believe something arguing aside anyhow. You know, that, that's one point. I, people get way too autistically caught up in like if you're making a video on a subject, you need to recognize both sides, like as ver- be as verbose as possible, cover every single little thing, even if it's like kind of boring or not directly going to support your point. You know, that that's that's one thing that people really need to if you're arguing something like in this context, I think be aware of. That's one of the points I want to talk about. Yeah, I just wanted to, to ask uh, before. I, so uh, like when you're when you're talking about um, like how you looked at those topics and like the, the Joe Rogan thing, you're just doing your own research out of curiosity, right? Uh, how do you pick video topics? Because I kind of resonate with that. Because a lot of times, like the topics I make, is just stuff like where I'm sort of, uh, you know, my YouTube channel is almost like me, like thinking out loud. It's like I'm trying to figure out like a, a problem myself, and it's like, oh, this is something I haven't solved. And then like I do research, and then it's like oh, I've actually got enough here, like to turn this into a video or something. Mm-hmm. Like the um, like the last one I did about diversity, like that was just someone on Telegram posted a a, a sociological study about um diversity and social trust and i was like this is this is interesting like i wonder what the what the kind of body of sociology says about this i just started reading different uh studies and like counter arguments and the next thing i had like pages of of sources and papers and i was like well you know might as well turn this into a video so uh like a lot a lot of uh, a lot of content i come up with is is like that so i guess you have a similar kind of process yeah um i mean picking your your battle is definitely a big part of it. Um, I mean, first off, I would just start off from who am I trying to win over here? What am I trying to accomplish with this argument? That'll that'll determine like the scope of like, you know, do I do I pick something that most normies have heard about? Or is this something where I'm going to like rally the base, preach to the choir sort of thing? And I, I also I guess, I guess I pick topics for videos based on how realistically I think I can actually make an impact in this field. Yeah, you know, as just like a random small YouTube channel, right? Um, I'm not gonna change anybody's minds on a, a abortion or something because they've heard hundreds of hours of arguments. They've heard every single argument. I I probably couldn't even come up with anything novel pretty really easily. So the scope of that is too large. Um, something like like the gay Greeks, though, you know, I think it's a good subject because most people 
I think yeah, at least in America, I don't know the, the people I've dealt with, they kind of accept the idea that ancient Greeks were totally gay. But really, if you were to like question what they're basing this on, they've heard it in jokes. They've maybe heard one or two primary sources where people actually cited this as being the case, you know, cer- sort of circumstantial evidence that the Greeks were gay. So it's based on a very shoddy foundation. So I see this as a place that I can go in and be like, I can provide you with a dozen, two dozen instances of people explicitly denouncing homosexuality. And, you know, the, the foundation is so is so poor that it, it just crumbles the entire thing. That's a big consideration as well. It's like, do I actually think this will have an impact in the sort of culture war and the societal discourse? Um, you know, so the scope has to be right. Uh, it has to be something that, you know, I think is going to accomplish a good. Uh, so, for instance, the the overarching idea of like trying to say that the ancient Greeks weren't gay is to it, it's there's meta commentary in there about homosexuality in our uh, in, in the in the present day. So, you know, I think I think there's a positive in that regard, too. Um, I don't know. I guess these are just these are the th- sorts of things I consider when I'm trying to pick an, uh, a new video topic. Like I have a whole list of things that I'd maybe like to cover one day, but um, they got to be evaluated with these things in mind. Yeah. I mean, uh, another thing is um, like, so, sometimes it's not so much about the argument either. Exactly. Um, like the way people, the way people shift their opinions is, um, you know, it's not as, ra- it's not as rational as, as we'd like to think. Right. Uh, like a, a lot of people jump from like the alt right to like bread tube um, or like, Destiny's community, uh, and a lot of that wasn't to do with any specific arguments. It was just the fact that there started to be this impression that, like, oh, Destiny is this unstoppable debate bro, and he's he's like embarrassing all these old writers. So, uh, you know, people follow the the strong horse, like, and there's there's so many, you know, there's so many um, opinions and, and and theories we believe that, like, obviously most people have never looked into the double helix structure of, of DNA exists or, you know, the theory of evolution or relativity. It's, you know, it's all a matter of who you trust, right? Uh, no one has to, the time um, or the, the intellect to investigate all these things. So it, it's all, almost everything people believe is just kind of a question of trust. So like a lot of times when you're presenting these topics, it's not so much like having the better argument as um, like a lot of times there'll be a, an opinion that seems like intuitively true to people. Um, and like this is especially true of like more intelligent people, but it's like if you don't see anyone uh, presenting it in an intelligent way and you have this impression that like, well, all the academics uh, think this is wrong. All the people that like study this stuff think it's wrong. Um, it, it kind of is like the... You know, people make fun of like the the midwit and they take expert opinion, but it it kind of is like just from purely like rational like probability thing. Like it's it's the more reasonable thing to just kind of go with the experts if you're not familiar with a with an area, right? But like so like even just like the even just having uh you know the alternative view presented uh, and it's like you know I have studies, I'm like this rational guy. You know, I'm I'm presenting all this in a way that you can check for yourself. Uh, you know, I've got like this expert opinion and blah 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 uh, and it's like they're, they're not even going to investigate like the, all the stuff that you you know your sources or yeah. look into like the, the depth of the arguments but just um you know just seeing that this is presented in, a, in an intelligent way a lot of times just flips something in people's heads where they're like oh maybe this isn't like a, it's a low status thing that that dumb people believe um and if yeah. nothing else it gets them to investigate it right yeah yeah if you can you know present i guess like inculcate people with like a certain emotional feeling about you like, unfortunately, that's kind of that's kind of a big thing. Like, that's why being charismatic is so important. Like, it's why being entertaining is so important. You know, if you're going to get someone to sit through an, an hour long video essay, you, you got to intersperse like jokes in there. You know, unless unless maybe it's just a topic they're deadly serious about. Um, it seems like people today want to be entertained first and then sort of wooed in that way. And then maybe they'll listen to you. Maybe they'll actually get your message across. But yeah, if, if you can just sort of present that that emotional state to them like give them that emotional state make them feel good about you that that's way more important than like the facts that you're dealing with the facts have to be there too because you know some people are going to uh if it's just complete nonsense give you the give them the opportunity to just like tear you down and like prove you wrong but yeah you're totally right it's it's kind of unfair it's kind of it's kind of sad but you know the masses are way more emotional than they are strictly rational obviously so you have to almost start off from that understanding 
when you're uh, yeah it's like it's like you have to have the the facts and the sources there it's like people aren't going to actually read them but just the fact that they know that like uh oh look at this right. big long list of sources and look at this like guy who's uh intelligent who uh, has this take and oh you know it's, it seems like he's kind of um btfo and like the, the popular view on this like um just the the sort of feeling that, that generates some people is is a lot to actually get them uh, you know at least considering the mm-hmm. the other perspective right 